Yes, you need to wear sunscreen every day, even on days like this. Hello and welcome to Chris Over 50. I'm Chris, I'm an engineer, I'm a type A control freak, and I like to test stuff. Today's video is all about sunscreens. I'm sure you're aware there are two types of ray, UVA and UVB. What you might not be aware of is that the UVA rays are the ones that age us, hence UVA versus UVB, which are the ones that can burn us. So on a cloudy, rainy day, we're not concerned with UVB rays. And the app on your phone that tells you that it is a low UV index day is not measuring UVA rays, only UVB. Now, why am I making such a big deal about this? Well, those UVA rays come through clouds. They come through windows. They are the ones responsible for aging us. If you don't believe me, take a look at the skin on your butt. It probably is wrinkle free. Now compare that to the skin on your face. Which one of those two places sees more light? Enough said. So yes, even on cloudy, rainy days, I wear sunscreen because my number one concern is keeping this looking as young as it can. In this video, I am going to talk about chemical versus mechanical sunscreens. So let me clarify first. First of all, it's all chemical, right? We are made from chemicals. But what I mean is for a mechanical sunscreen, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, those ingredients are a coating that reflect light. They start protecting you the minute you put them on. As opposed to the chemical sunscreens. These have chemicals that need to penetrate our skin and undergo a chemical change to protect us from the sun's rays. Let's get into that testing. First up is the Australian Gold Botanical SPF 50 Tinted Face Sunscreen. And as you can see, uh, this is actually one from last year. I'm kind of down to the ends on it. What I like about this sunscreen, number one, it is the least expensive one that I am testing. $15.99, which retails then for $5.33 per ounce. It is mechanical, meaning the two primary ingredients that are providing you protection are the titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Australian gold comes in different shades. You know, one of the big complaints about mechanical sunscreens is the white cast that you can get from some of them. Many manufacturers are tinting them and I like that Australian gold has different tints. So I will go from the lightest one, which is what I'm applying here, to the medium one in the summertime. It is also one of the more opaque sunscreens that I'm testing. I joked during my Jones Road Foundation review that I think I got more coverage from this sunscreen and I think it's true. It's a really good product uh, to put on and just throw on a little blush, a swipe of mascara and be done for the day in the summertime. In my experience, this sunscreen can be a little drying. For that reason, I would say if you have oily or combo skin, you would really like it. For those of us with normal to dry skin, for me, it is too drying to use it in the winter time. I do like it in the summertime. Another caution, you can see here where I'm applying foundation with my fingers, I got a little bit of foundation breakup when I look down, my skin under my eyes is not looking so great. So again, maybe not the best sunscreen for dry skin. And here it is with makeup and everything turned out well in the end. Moving up just a little bit in the price per ounce, we have the Bare Republic Mineral Sunscreen. This is an SPF 30 and its main ingredients are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. 
The third ingredient in this is dimethicone. So, so to me, it has a very primer feeling. It's very slippery. It actually feels really nice going on. As you can see, there is a white cast, but it blends in easily. If you're considerably darker toned than I am, it might be an issue for you. With all that dimethicone in there, it does not surprise me in the least that applying foundation with my fingers is a dream over this sunscreen. It may be my favorite to wear under sunscreen just for that reason. The Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Moisturizing Face Serum SPF is the first of two chemical-based sunscreens that I'm testing. And this uses avobenzone, homosalate, oxysilate, and octocrylene as its sunscreen ingredients. I'm going to be honest with you, and chemical sunscreens are not my preference. Studies have shown that those ingredients end up in our bloodstream, and that is just outside of my comfort zone. I recognize that there are people that prefer the chemical sunscreens, and I know that they are safe, so I am testing two of them in this video. I'm continuing with my makeup and I am feeling like this Neutrogena sunscreen is a lot shinier than the other sunscreens I've been testing. I'm sure I can uh, mattify it with setting powder, but I'm, um, I'm a little concerned about it. May Love, the sun protector, has an SPF of 30 and its primary ingredient for sun protection is zinc oxide. Again, it is an all white mineral sunscreen, but it does blend in without too much rubbing. I'm not positive, but this is probably my sixth or seventh tube of this sunscreen that I have owned. If you're not familiar with Maylove, it's a group of friends that got together and decided they wanted to make luxury skincare without the big price tag. I don't have any issues applying foundation over this sunscreen. It's really easy to use my fingers, which I think is the biggest test for a sunscreen. And here I am just going to even it out with a beauty blender. Now we have the Logically Skin Hydro Multi-Shield Defense Logic. This is a Korean skincare brand, and this is another chemical sunscreen. The main protective ingredients are Adipsol, Pollock CD, and Aquatide. I could not find any information on these products when I Googled them. This is only one of two sunscreens that I'm reviewing that have one of those PA ratings, and this is PA++++++, meaning it is really good at blocking both UVA and UVB rays. I got this off of Amazon. I've ordered it several times despite it being a chemical sunscreen. It's super moisturizing, and I love using it in the morning when I walk the dog. Before I shower or wash my face or anything, I just slap on sunscreen to walk the dog, and this has been my go-to. I don't usually use it under makeup, but it performed really nicely, although it is a little shiny for my taste. The Roche-Posay Anthelos Light Fluid Sunscreen the tinted version. This actually comes in both a non-tinted and tinted. I was a little concerned picking up the tinted because just the packaging made it look like it would be too dark, but it is not. It is a very runny consistency. 
but I find that means it goes on easily and you don't have to rub vigorously to get it to rub in. It spreads very easily. The sun protecting ingredients in this are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. There is a little luminosity, but not too bad. Makeup applies very easily over this sunscreen. There's no problem using my fingers. And I think the final look is really pretty. None of that luminosity is coming through. The Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer has an SPF of 46. The main ingredients that protect you here are zinc oxide and octanoxate. There is a little bit of controversy around that octanoxate. And if you are susceptible to acne, you may want to avoid this sunscreen. I like that it has a pump. It goes on easily. This is a tinted formula. I do usually use one pump on my face and then another pump for my neck and then back over my face. This sunscreen stays luminous after it dries, although I have never had an issue with foundation being too luminous because of it. It is a really good dupe for the next sunscreen. The Elta MD UV Daily Broad Spectrum Tinted Moisturizer with SPF 40 is what we have now. And just like the Dermatology, the two ingredients that protect you from the sun are the zinc oxide and the octanoxate, which is why this one and the previous one, the Dermatology, are such dupes for each other. This one comes in at $20.29 per ounce, making it about 25% more expensive than the Dermatology. I know for a lot of YouTubers, this is their holy grail sunscreen. Because of the moisturizing properties, it's really good for normal to dry skin. I've never had any issues with it under makeup. Everything goes on beautifully. This is another one where I have owned it for several years. Now we're getting into the bougie end of things. We have Tula's Skin Care Mineral Magic with an SPF of 30 featuring titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Having said that, it only retails for a few dollars more than the Elta MD. However, when you look at the per ounce cost it is about 25% more. It's tinted which I really like. It goes on easily. It blends in well. Functionally there is not a whole lot of difference between this and the La Roche Posay. I have been using it off and on over the last several weeks and it always plays well under makeup. The last facial sunscreen is the Tatcha the Silk Sunscreen. This is an SPF 50, and besides the Logically Skin one, this is the only other one with a PA rating, and that is plus, 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 four pluses, <laughs> which means it's very good at UVA and UVB blockage. The ingredient that is protecting you from the sun's rays in this is zinc oxide. It does clock in at $60 for 1.7 ounces. Is it worth it? Well, it is a lovely sunscreen. It is tinted, it goes on easily, it blends in well, it works and plays well under foundation, it has beautiful packaging. If this is what it takes to get you to wear sunscreen every day, then by all means, spend the money However, um, yeah, the Tula and the Tatcha are very close, and I would lump the La Roche-Posay in there as well. I wanted to include two specialty under-eye products. First, 
from Supergoop, the Bright Eyed 100% Mineral Eye Cream. This is half an ounce, SPF 40, retails for $38, which then works out to $76 per ounce, and the active ingredient is zinc oxide. It is tinted, it provides mild color correction. I also have the Color Science Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal Therapy. This is 0.23 ounces, an SPF of 35. It retails for $74, which comes out to a whopping $321.74 per ounce. I have owned this for years, but I did not remember it being so expensive. It comes in four shades. So I like that it is more inclusive and it is also more opaque than the Super Goop. It took me 10 days to shoot all of these and I have actually been using all of these sunscreens a lot longer than that. This video has been over 30 days in the making. I will say that the best sunscreen is the one you will actually wear. There was only one sunscreen I really didn't like and it was that Neutrogena one. It just was too shiny and like I said, I'm biased against the chemical sunscreens. I've also learned that I prefer to have a pump for my applicator. For me, that helps me get a consistent amount so I feel like I'm getting consistent coverage. And also, it is a generous amount so I feel like I am really getting the SPF 30, 40, 50, whatever it is, out of that sunscreen. It was a very interesting exercise for me to price these out per ounce. That really helped put some things into perspective. I wish I could have learned more about the sunscreens that are in that Logically Skin product. I'm on my third or fourth tube of that stuff and I really do like it. You know, first thing in the morning, it's a lot of moisture in my face, but now I'm curious about that. Clearly, it's going to take me a while to use up all this sunscreen. If something happened to them all and I had to go buy sunscreen right now, I would pick up the La Roche-Posay, the tinted version. I really liked it. No, it doesn't have a pump, but it's mechanical sunscreen. It blended in easily. It wore well under foundation. I just think it's a really high quality sunscreen. What's your favorite sunscreen? Comment down below and be sure to include your skin type. If you liked this video, you're also gonna enjoy this one that is my morning skincare routine. It'll be linked on the screen in just a moment along with a playlist of all my skincare stuff. 